This is the Ethereum one month overview reading for the month of April, 2024. It's currently March 29th, 2024, 7.24 p.m. Eastern time. We're doing this reading quite a bit uh, later because we were planning to discontinue Ethereum, but somebody ordered the custom monthlies for Ethereum. Um, so here we are doing Ethereum last minute for you guys. Uh, the current price of Ethereum at the time of this reading, $3,519.83, that's USD. And the shuffle video that we're playing for you here in the lower left corner was created on February 2nd, 2024 at 8.54 p.m. Eastern time. That's a video down there in the lower left corner. So the overall theme and behavior for Ethereum in the month of April, there is a significant trough or significant bottom on a one-year chart scale highlighted here uh, as the theme card being the death card. It might it, it might include a sharp drop into that. Uh, it's crossed, however, with some back and forth kind of price swings, equal amounts of bulls and bears inflow and outflow. So we'll probably see highs and lows more than once based on that and kind of go back and forth and sort of end up sideways at the end of the month based on that. That's, that's usually what you see sort of sideways because it's on a big a big time scale so it's not going to be like straight sideways but it's pretty close based on that um at least moments throughout april based on that change card now the behavior around the highest side we have a significant decline through multiple support levels on a multi-day scale off of the high for the month of, of april and then behavior around the lowest low for the month of april we have a crest that we sell off from down to and through support we do a u-shape reversal below that support creating the lowest low and then we come back and reuse that price level as support now i'm going to get into the day-by-day -day chart behavior as well as timing the highest highs and the lowest lows but before i do that i want to make sure that everybody is aware before we do that, I want to make sure that everybody is aware. The whole purpose of the channel is to transmute some of the competitive energy of the stock market into goodwill. We do that by following the rule of karma for the channel. You go to the resources tab of our website, Terra for Traders, and 5% of the profits from every profitable trade utilizing this information should be donated forward to one of these charities, or pick a charity of your choosing, as long as you're paying 5% forward, and then 5% should be sent back to the channel through one of these links. If you're international, you can use Wise or you can use YouTube Tips. And that leaves you at 90%. Make sure to spend that 90% out of love. As long as you follow those rules, you follow the rule of karma for the channel, the universe considers you an angel investor. is going to send it back to you tenfold for following through. Blessings to all my angel investors. Let's get back into it. On the first, we have a sideways S formation that forms within a channel. So usually when you see the queen of cups, you have like a you have a resistance and a support that you decline from the resistance to the support, back to the resistance, back to the support. It's usually like a horizontal kind of resistance and support, but sometimes it is at an angle and it's usually, if it's at an angle, it's almost always to the downside. We have sideways rotation on the second, establishing support and a big move higher that'll stand out on a multi-day scale. So off of that big move to the upside on the second, we have a notable decline back down. That move to the downside, it's either on the third or the fourth, because we have a peak on the, on the fourth, on the cusp of the third and the fourth, and a reversal, a significant reversal that is really going to stand out there on the fourth. Um, and it looks like we go from the peak into a trough and a significant trade opportunity in the, in the, in the late morning or midday on the fourth. And then we're back to a crest or a peak of some kind on, on the morning of the fifth, where we move higher through resistance. We stay above it briefly. And then we break back down through it with a full retracement back down. And then that retracement continues through multiple support levels into a low on the sixth or the seventh. So it looks like we, we have a pretty big move on the fifth higher to a high. And then from there, we decline with the full retracement, but that retracement continues into a lowest low. We go from a highest high to a lowest low there around the fifth, sixth, seventh. On the 7th, we have a peak that we sell off from through multiple support levels, and then that turns into volatility on the 8th. Uh, there's a sharp drop towards the end of the day within that period of volatility on the 8th. A day trade opportunity there on the 8th that we'll talk about in more detail in the paid version. And then in the morning on the 9th, out of a significant trough, maybe the same price level, out of, a, out of a significant trough, we have another notable move to the upside early in the day on the 9th, taking us to a prominent peak and a trade opportunity. From that peak, somewhere between the 9th and the 10th, we sell. it's a notable peak and not a crest in this case. We sell off pretty notably on a one-month a one a one month chart or a multi-day scale. There's a day trade opportunity on the 10th ind indicating that we probably have a lot of price change there. And then that decline continues into the 11th, but ends on the 11th with a fast sudden move higher, taking us into another prominent peak on the 12th, which forms within a period of volatility that ends with a fast sudden move higher. Pretty notable price swings or back and forth kind of price action on the 13th. Uh, there's an important resistance level highlighted there on the 13th on a multi-day scale, and it, it provides a, a, an opportunity to trade that I'll, I'll talk about in more detail in the paid version. There's either a highest high there on the 13th or it's on the 14th, but we decline from that highest high again pretty notably down to and through support to meet another support, and then we rotate sideways along that support into pretty notable price swings on the 15th. Whatever that price level is there at the end of the day on the 14th, we're likely to see a lower price level on the 15th or the 16th. And there's also a trade opportunity near a peak towards the end of the day on the 15th, as well as significant low or possibly even a lowest low thus far on the 15th in the midst of those price swings. Before we go any further, let's take a look and see how we did for March. The March reading was created on January 8, 2024 at 8.52 p.m. Eastern Time. Double click, it brings you to this file right here. So on the first, we had a highest high thus far, and then we had um, a lowest low thus far on the third, and it looks like we didn't quite come into a lowest low, but it was pretty darn close. Then we have a rally on the fourth into key resistance, and then we sell off from that resistance with consecutively lower spikes up on the way down. That's that big sharp drop on the fifth on the fifth that takes place. Prominent trough there on the fifth. This is pretty accurate. And also it's it's selling from an over a near overbought crest. But then the following day we have this big move to the upside there on the sixth, really big move to the upside. Interesting follow by this is where I thought we were gonna see a, we were gonna revisit a support here. But probably there's a support when you look at this one day at this from a one day chat standpoint i bet you we, we revisit an important support that took place on the daily chart there on the sixth. not gonna get it right every time and this is why it's important to trade like i'm not right all the time because there is like a two to four percent error rate there 
On the 9th, we have an important price level. We kind of flatten out there. Look at that. That's the 9th right there. We're kind of flattening out. On the 10th, another notable drop I had as, as a possible lowest low. And again, didn't come down all the way. Very frustrating. Not my best reading by any standard, really. It's one of my worst, I think, based on missing so many of these lows. But on the 10th, we or on the 11th, we have another low, which is a prominent low. And that, that comes through. And then another significant low on the 12th. And you can see low, low, low. We have the sharp low, the sharp low, the sharp low. And then... uh on the 13th, those price swings, that's very like, you see how this is almost like sidewaysy with big swings, that's a change card. Didn't end up being the lowest low. And then I had a highest high for the 15th, with it, which it looks like I was a little late on. Really not my best work at all. One of my worst, I think, in a long time. Sorry about that, guys. Not gonna get it right every time. I'll do better on this cypher one, for sure. Even so, we're gonna check out some of these trades. I'm sure the trades probably still panned out because they almost always do. Even when things like that, like missing the highest high and the lowest low by a few days, even when that happens, the trades are usually still on point. Right, and then we go into this like pretty notable low here on the 16th, almost the lowest note, not quite. Another sharp drop on the 17th with that Unicursal. You can see we came down even more. Science price level here on the 18th. I wanna mark that off. Although I think it's probably right here is the science price level right there. That's the science price level. And then we go into a trough on the 20th. I have a prominent trough on the 19th. Looks like it's on the 19th, 20th. With a big rally increasing with momentum there on the 20th after a significant decline. That Prince of Cups followed by the Prince of, of Wands. Look at this. They're like almost like identical moves in one, one direction and then back in the other. So interesting. And then we have a pretty another big decline on the 22nd into the 23rd. That's where I thought we were going to hit a, a, another low. Didn't quite come into it. Rallied back to the upper end of a range. Yeah, see, there's another sharp drop there. This is the 29th, right? There's another Unicursal right there, guys. I think we probably see our lowest low here right at the end of the month, but only time will tell. With that said, it's not an awful reading. Um, Here on the 5th, you could have done a day trade where in the, a sh there's a sharp drop and a big move to the upside. You could have gotten a big move to the upside, sharp drop. Could have traded that not uh, pretty successfully, I should say. And then on the 15th was a good day to open up a short position, as indicated here, to close on the 19th or the 23rd. So the 15th was here. This is pre this was the, one of the, the trades I considered one of the best trades for the month. Um, here on the 15th, opening up a short, closing the short here on the 19th or the 22nd, 23rd, or maybe the 25th, 26th. So we're on the 15th. I said, do it. the sooner you do it, the better. You need to have higher risk tolerance to go out further, but you're always better taking your profit early and then repositioning and getting more profit later. But anyhow, so this was the 15th, right? Right up here. And then on the 19th, we're down here. That would have been a really solid trade. Like a, that's that's like down in the 3000s, not even 3100. And on the 15th, we were all the way up in 38. So that's a solid, solid trade. And then um, on the 23rd, you could have opened up a long position, 23rd, 24th, and you could close that long position on the 27th. That would have panned out pretty solid too, guys. These were solid, solid trades. Um, you, only, only people who saw these trades before they actually happened were the people that had the paid version of the uh, monthly for Ethereum. And they would have known about these trades, I mean, well in advance, like over a month in advance. So with that said, guys, if you're interested in the paid version, it's a really great way to support the channel, a great way to get my attention. I, I recognize the names of everybody that subscribes to one of these because they're really the core foundation of support for the channel. So you go to our services, SOMeta Posts, scroll down to monthly subscription, click here to order. You're, you can subscribe to any one of these individual tickers of crypto, or you can subscribe to the all paid version of the monthly and you get the paid version of all of these, plus any one-offs or customs that are ordered. Like in, in April, we have Theta and we have uh, Chainlink as well on a monthly basis. Um, anybody who's got the all paid monthly is, is able to see the paid version of those. And what do you get in the paid version? You get the timing of the best trades that we see throughout the month, what trades to avoid, what type of chart behavior to look for as far as entry and exit in and out of those trades, because we're not always right on the day. O often we are, but we're not always. So knowing what type of chart behavior to look for as far as entry and exit is very helpful as well. And price level information that we're able to extrapolate is in the paid version as well. This is the only place in the world where you can get this information prior to it actually taking place in real time. The only place. Totally undervalued, guys. Um, so thanks again to everybody that goes ahead and does that. And let's get back into it. There's a day trade there on the 15th. We'll talk about it in more detail on the paid version. On the 16th, it looks like we have some price swings between the price swings on the 15th probably continue into the 16th. Maybe they kind of like peter out on the 16th and it turns into much more of like a, a significant decline towards the end of the day. There's a peak towards the late morning session on the 17th and we sell off from that to a, a key support that we recently met once before there on the 17th. On the 18th, probably from that peak on the 17th, we have this like U-shaped dip where we come back and, and revisit that peak or close midday on the 18th. Um, but there's a notable trough here. There's a possibility of a lowest low here on the 18th, but it's not quite as strong as some of the other locations. And we'll talk about that in more detail on the paid version. But out of that low on the 18th, we have a rally that increases with momentum moving forward in time on the 19th, taking us to from a tr uh, prominent trough to a prominent peak on a one month scale, the prominent peak being on the cusp of the 19th, 20th. And there's a lot of price change on the, on the 20th based on the Princess of Discs. A cash out opportunity. I'll talk about it in more detail on the paid version as well. On the 21st, we have a failed attempt to break through key resistance followed by a decline through key support. On the 20, 22nd, the decline through key support continues into the 22nd, but then there's this unexpected move to the upside on the 22nd, even in the face of seemingly overwhelming headwinds or seemingly really negative uh, technical uh, chart behavior. Which leads me to believe there might be a low. This might really be a low here, or possibly the Bitcoin low is here. The Bitcoin also, its theme card is the death card as well. And the Bitcoin low seems to be here on the 21st, 22nd. So it's pretty interesting there. We have an important price level at resistance in the late morning session on the 23rd. We poke through it momentarily. There's a trade opportunity there. And I'm advised to be very cautious, uh, prudent, I should say, around on the, on the 23rd, multiple false tops or bottoms or some sort of chart, tricky chart behavior that would likely create the impulse to do something, do the wrong thing. On the 24th, we have an important peak. The abundance card in some in, often indicates like a highest high, but it doesn't always. And in the case here, I'm thinking it probably is not the case here on the 24th. But what it likely does is creates a peak that's like 
like a new high after after visiting lows. There's a lowest low here on the 24th in the midst of a decline in the, in the morning to middle part of the day. And then it looks like there's a rally or midday. We probably see a lowest low twice here, actually. We go from a lowest low to a, to a peak midday and then back to a lowest low there either at the end of the day on the 24th or probably on the 25th. But out of the decline on the 25th, another big move from the bottom of range all the way to the top of range on a multi-day scale. And there's a day trade opportunity that we'll talk about in more detail in the paid version. On the 26th, we have sideways rotation establishing support, a big move higher on a one month chart scale, and then sideways rotation establishing support at a higher price level. But the peak created on the 26th midday, there's a significant decline off of it. Rally ends on the 27th towards the end of the day. I'm advised not to chase that rally. It looks like very likely we have a, a highest high here on the 27th, 28th, or possibly the 20, more likely the 29th. But the science card does indicate an important price level there on, a multi, on like a, a one year chart scale. There's a sharp, sharp drop on the 29th off of that important price level, and the decline continues with bearish price swings or more decline on the 30th. Sneak preview for the following month of May is sideways rotation on key support on a one year chart scale, or at least a one month chart scale minimum, but probably a one year chart scale kind of support. We do sideways rotation along it at least significantly at one point in May. And we'll talk about May in more detail in the May reading. That's the Ethereum one month overview reading for the month of April 2024. Let me know what you think by hitting that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't done so and you like this stuff. It really helps out the channel. And most importantly, my friends, make sure to follow that rule of karma. You know where to go. You know what to do. Blessings to all my angel investors. I'll see you guys on the next one. And stay tuned if you got the paid version.